Oi, oi. So, Loki 13, our last video. So, in this point, I'm going to address uh, local refinement. So, I think we have covered everything, and this is the last part. We already have covered local refinement, but just to show you local surface, but also volume refinement that we haven't seen. So, let's go to the classical geometry. So, I will open a geometry, and uh, I will do also. Uh, refresh a crash refresh here so remember that you import it and what we want this black lines means that it is a closed surface so you can have red yellow blue so blue is not a problem it's disconnected uh yellow means that it's a line connected to more than two surfaces and red is single edge lines okay so that will be okay for baffle so we want to have everything in black because it means that that is connected otherwise you need to do some repairing or you can go ahead and try to mesh using topology based meshing tools maybe will give you problems the <clears throat> the same wrap the string wrap which it is a uh, fault tolerant it will work but it's better to have no a good topology so remember that to go and do the meshing there is no problem i can work on this one but it's always a good idea to separate you know create the different groups the name selections or the patches the surfaces now so you can select faces and i will do it here again just to remind you that this is an important step now because you can do your mesh using the whole single surface but then when you go to your cfd solver it will be tricky to define the boundary condition it's not impossible but it's better to to have it everything done at machine level okay so you have move group there i have this here and let me go and cut it out and then the rest will be wall but also let's say that i want to separate this okay into walls because in this one maybe i would like to apply a different meshing uh, local local refinement so i would put it in another group but there is another way to do it instead of separating that into groups that i will show you okay and this is and this is it so now we're ready to go so remember first geometry you have all the options so feel free to to play around this is options then we go to mesh and here you have the different me uh, methods that we have covered everything here and at this point global parameters okay so here is your global parameters local parameters and i like to open this settings here that i have a more detailed list and i like to work for some reason i prefer to work here okay so at this point i can go and do my meshing i can define my global parameter so at this point is just enough i can put this curvature and using default parameters and only surface by the way it will do something okay so see that we have a, a mesh there but it's not enough because also we need to define maximum and minimum to have more control okay so let me close this mesh so the question at this point you know your geometry you know the dimension so you can set up your max size there so you go over here you have the ruler and you can measure so it's not a problem but if you have no idea and let me go to geometry you select geometry you can select a face right click and see here that you have the option set size you can go there and input a size and there you go you have that tetra there that is your visual reference so you can see you put that one super small so this is sometimes how i do it when i don't have any visual reference be careful not to put a value there otherwise you are going to set that dimension and this is the other way that i wanted to show you how to set a dimension so see that here we have everything split well, one will do. So I can access and put my, uh, by the way, let me put zero one, zero zero one there. And if I do the mesh, so now we're going to have something, something nice. Okay. And talking about that in the previous video that I showed you that sometimes it will put some quads. So see here that it's trying to put quads there. Okay. So it does it automatically. If you don't want those quads, all triangles problem solved. Okay or you can disable that option locally later we're going to see and here let me put here 0 0.5 okay and see so that we have a lot of control local control but let's say that here in this geometry I have another section in my topology that belongs to wall one but if i try to to, to select wall, wall one it will select everything that i have in my geometry so can i do it locally 
okay, without separating, adding another patch there. Yes, we can go back to the geometry. And remember here you have the whole topology. So you can select that topology, this one, or even an edge. I would say even a node, but this refinement doesn't apply in a node. I will show you the trick around. You need to create a density there, like many tools also. So select the face and then you go set size or you can also set patterns. Okay, here just is the same equivalent. So here you can put your size. You have it there and a 105 there. And this option here is the type of mesh. So we're using triangles, but also you have map or quad. You know? So these are kind of a structures topology, but this only applies when you have a face with four nodes, okay, rectangles, stuff like that, poly with four long nodes, okay. So more advanced stuff we do it, but if you have those faces, you can find a structural face and it will try to do a structural mesh there. So we put there now, or is the one triangle, but already forcing everything to triangle. And another cool feature that you put that and it's still here in geometry, you can mesh this face and see what happens. So with the parameters that you have and all the influence of all the other measures, this is what you have. So you're happy with this. You go to mesh and there you go. So see that we apply locally the influence, but at the topology level, not at the groups level. Okay, so you have another level of flexibility here. So also, for instance, let me go and we were talking about, let me hide the mesh. And later we mentioned that you can select edges, that edge, you can set parameters, so you can set size that I showed previously or go here. And here you have more options. So see that edges and faces, they have different options, okay? So in this case, let me set here 0 0.02, okay? And just to show that here, you can also see the characteristic size. Okay, well, probably it is the other way. Let me go here. Okay, so, well, to see it, okay, you can go set size. Let's see. There you go. Okay. So I would put 0 0.02. And also, let me go in pattern auctions here. You already have it there. And you can disable that, disable that, that prison as you want, you can allow. So I will allow that. I will put zero one. Okay. So this is growing similar to the volume, volume boundary layer. And I'm happy with this. And there you go. So in this case, okay, it didn't grow. Remember that we are forcing everything triangles. So disable triangles. And there you go. You grow your prison layer. And just to show you that you can apply this refinement in all the topology, okay, in all the entities that you have in your geometry. Okay, so for instance, let me select this edge here in the inlet phase and let me add another one so I don't want to change parameters there. And I go like this. Let me go zero two. Okay, I put that. And there you go. Okay. So see that we're only doing the uh, surface mesh. Okay. It's quite fast, but it might happen that sometimes this surface mesh can be time consuming. So if you have something, save it and then move to the next step. Boundary layer. If you don't like the boundary layer, reopen the surface mesh, redo the boundary layer and the same for the volume, uh, volume mesh. Okay. So you see that working nicely, everything. Okay. And let me close the mesh and sometimes it might happen that, okay, you we define some groups here and it's quite easy to ask, access this information, but let's say in time you have complicated geometry, you define a lot of edges and select some surfaces here, and you don't know where do you have those surface parameters at the geometry level. So as you go here in geometry, right click, you have some options here. So we have show geometry mesh patterns. So here you see all the, the it entities where you define mesh parameter. So you have it here by entity ID. So this is the internal database in the, in the novel. So probably you don't know what is it, but you have the size here, define it. And if you want to find one of those already, you know that this is edge, edge and face, but if you want to find one of these, again, you go here and see that find entities. 
and where is the Nova here? And you just look the entity. So for instance, what is this entity D14? I don't know, I don't recall what is that. You go here, entity ID was 14 and you can go here, there soon select it or you can find and there you go, it's this one. Okay, so one you can move it to another group, okay, put it outside with another name, so it's up to you. But this is how you can get an idea, know all the entities that you are meshing. Okay, so I don't like to move it to group when I do it now at the geometry level, okay, because I know I didn't split it before for some reason, so I, I prefer to keep it in the same group. Okay, so this is how it works, I think. Uh, you have now an idea, the local refinement, how everything is controlled, and let's do also some boundary layer now. So let's do the step, first step, you have your nice mesh there. Let me add the boundary layer. So in this case, I will enable the boundary layer here and here, and I will use global parameters, three layers, and everything is automatically controlled. Remember, it's 0.2 of the edge size, the, how it will grow, and I will put there I see a nice inflation layer, everything following the parameters we defined there and so on. So now I will go and generate my volume mesh. Okay, so for the moment, I will leave this option there on. I will click there and I will create the, vo the volume mesh made, made off of Tetra and I put there. Okay, and For some reason, extra. Okay, I didn't. Okay, I have my. Okay, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. let me redo again. Something happens that I don't see. So I have there. And let me go right ahead to. Okay, the prison. Okay, grow there. So always off of street. So bad things can happen. I have there. And let me go here. I want to create my. Tetra mesh. Okay, now it's working. I think I should have something there, hopefully. Okay, there you go. So I don't know what happened first. Uh, so see that we have this, and look at that we have your mesh try to it, it, the, the Nova try to orient it with the reference axis, and it's quite nice. So this topology is a lattice topology, okay? So if you want to disable this topology in lattice. So as you go here, meshing, disable this option. Okay, I need to redo everything. Okay, put it there, put it there. And now the new mesh probably will be a little bit more familiar to you, you know, that, that anisotropic distribution in the whole space. So put it there, extra, and there you go. Okay. And it is exactly the same behavior as you put poly. So, so now if I enable poly, I will have the anisotropic distribution, but if I enable, if I enable that lattice, you're going to have those polyhedron align it with your reference axis. So this step takes time, okay. Okay, there you go. And if I put my cut plane, so these are the cells I'd like to use, okay. But later we're going also to do some benchmarking and see if there is a, a better cell type than the other. And there you go. Okay, so we play, okay, a lot this auction. So just to end this intro video and not to annoy you anymore with this pipe. So we have a lot of local refinement defined it all over the place. So the, the final option that I want to show you is that we can also do volume refinement. So volume refinement, it can be done at the geometry level, but that is tricky because you need to prepare that in the CAD. Okay, you can do something here, but it's, tri it's, it's tricky. This is why is that you move to auction here, you see that you create, you can create some density entities. So you have this entity, so you can create a queue, a cylinder, a sphere, a con, and later now it, it is future developments that arbitrary density. So for instance, you want to create this box and there you go. So everything that is contained in this box will be refined. Okay. So for instance, I can go and let me do like this. Let me select everything here. Okay, so all the auction is quite easy to control everything. And there you go. So here I will put the mesh size. So everything within this box, and there you go. 
we have that refinement level so as you see it's a lot okay and if you are happy with this box okay so as you go here you have it here so you can at any point you can define this box you can redefine this box make it larger or smaller and change these parameters okay self-explanatory what you are doing there and now if i go here create this one will do the surface mesh and you are going to have the influence okay of this box in the surface so you see that it's taking some time i suspected that value i mentioned that it was a little bit low so let's wait a little bit when it's done so it's doing oh i enable the volume mesh that is why it's taking so let me go meshing and for some reason okay so let's do only the the surface so you can see that the effect there so there you go you have the effect all over so for some reason also it's growing in this phase there it's affecting that phase or so probably i enable some local refinement in that surface i don't recall okay so see that we have all the influence all over so let me make that box smaller okay so then edit uh make it smaller here to cover just the, that part okay let me make it also a little bit larger 0.3 and let's rematch and there you go okay oh, okay i know what happened previously yeah you have that box and yes to keep that level uniform because you also will impose on edge there it tried to, to, to propagate everything. So you have to be careful now some combinations can, it's not an, a bad behavior, but it's a behavior that to get a good quality mesh, you need to force everything all around. But we can look at here and clear that we have the effects uh, of the box there. And it's only affecting here the surface. If you grow the boundary layer, it's not going to affect the boundary layer, meaning that is you forcing the boundary layer here to a given size, it's not going to, to make it smaller. That size here, the height is fixed, okay? And it's fixed if you impose, impose, impose the height, but if you use the free method, it's going to change now according now to to the dimension in the, in the surface of the boundary layer. And just to show you there that it is changing, it is adapting to your surface boundary layer. But if you fix it there, it remain fixed, it doesn't matter, this, this box doesn't have any influence. And then if I click here, and this will be a time consuming operation, let me say no, and now let me enable the lattice i recommend to use this lattice but it's up to you also well in a future video we will do some benchmarking and see what happens with all options are proper but it's always up to you just to to take a conclusion it's true that for some cases it may be better to use excess or probably tetra or probably polyos and all <laughs> something else okay so here i'm doing the volume mesh and there you go okay so we did everything up to t to the tet to, to the poly and if I put here my cut plane and recall that in the previous one they were very uh, anisotropic this this polyhedron now they are very nicely aligned with your reference axis and see here your influence box okay and it's putting some a given number of, of polyhedron here to transition to a larger one according to the aspect greater 1.2 so see that this box doesn't have a influence here everything is controlled like in the previous video and this is it okay how you get also volume control you can add more volume controls or more, more density so let's say that let me go back here and let me raise the mesh okay i don't need the cut plane anymore so okay it's gone so let's say we have this one and let's say out of curiosity that okay i want to add a refinement in this node because my topology sees, sees that node so you can select it and actually as you go set size you can define a cell, a cell size but that doesn't have an influence at all there so the way to, to impose an influence in a node is by coming here in mesh and you add like many other meshing tools they does it like this okay so let me do it uh, cancel so you select the entity so see that i will select so you can go there and it will select something there 
and this will be the center of your, in this case, the affairs or, or whatever. So let me select node, and there, I have that node, I select this sphere, and this is the center of my sphere. And now this is, I'm doing a body of influence around a node, okay? So this is the proper way to do it. So let me cell size, it will be this one, and the radius, let me put 0 0.4. So I have my body of influence or my density sphere. You impose some size there and this is how you work. And you can select edges or move it and you can put your densities. So, so far to my knowledge, I think there is no limit in the number of densities and they can intersect also. also so the smaller one will have more control. And okay, so this is a little bit small, large. So let me put here 0 0.5 and let me go let me do surface mesh and at this point there you go you have the influence everything seems okay nice so oh, i'm not going to go into detail but sometimes you can see some strange behavior or probably i will show you okay and for instance you go and you do your volume volume mesh you are going to have the influence of all those cells but for instance let's say that you want to only influence the surface you don't want to influence the volume mesh so what you can do is that you generate your surface mesh and then you go and delete this influence density and then when you go here to volume mesh you don't have that influence anymore okay so probably it would be easier if you disable that option but the check mat is just for visualization it's not disabled that for meshing so it's a future develop just to enable that Okay, so we're doing the poly, the conversion, probably next step, I will disable that because it's a little bit time consuming. And there you go. So here clearly there is no influence in the bond, in the volume, but we have the influence in the surface mesh. Okay, so disable here. So, bam, 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 my surface mesh, and, this is, and there you see. Okay, so surface mesh, you have the influence, but we then disable that, erase that, and we don't have that influence in your volume mesh. So, in turn, it's in something just to end here. So, we have covered everything, and I would like just to show you. In some cases, it might happen that, for instance, I can add that influence here, and let me try to add here, I will select that node, I press the key and uh, there, and I said that this is fear like in the previous case, and then just, you can resize a little bit. Okay, and let me put zero four there, and let me go here, zero 25. Okay, and we have the density there, and let's do the surface meshing, probably, okay. And look at that, you have the influence, perfect but see this is strange behavior here in this line so here in reality what is happening what is happening is that in our geometry okay the cat that we have that the cat is a definition of functions norms spline and stuff like that it's quite complex there are some mathematical functions there but it might happen that in that specific case and i know there is a line there so see that these two vertices in this surface, there was a line there, but then when we imported, we missed that information, we considered that we don't need it for some reason, but here it will be important to have it. So what we can do is just here, select, select, create edge between nodes, or let me go there, no. Then select this, this, and I can split face at edge, okay. So I split this face at this edge. Okay, previously it was blue, was disconnected, but then using this operation kind of projected and split. And now I have this topology here. And if I do my mesh again, we don't have that problem anymore. So you can see it was missing some information, but now we're enforcing that. So that might happen from time to time. It's not a problem if you're using all this might not be a problem okay but it might happen okay 
So many tools will suffer the same. It, it might have depends on the parameterization, how everything has been parameterized in the, at the cat level, and if we keep or no, or know that information. Okay. So just to show you again, so let me go back here. So if I erase this here, and I do the mesh, you have that problem there, okay? It's not a big problem. The mesh is still of a good quality, okay? I'm happy with this, but if you want something more perfect, okay, because it's already perfect, just add that, okay? Uh, for instance, let's say that we can play, and let me play a little bit here, let me set it here, let me select a face, because we can add some local smoothing probably, it will improve something. So I selected all those faces and this is smoothing and let me put 10 steps there. Okay, so that is trying to, to do something now to make it. Okay, now it's, it's, it's pretty previously. So this is that what you can do is you have those effects, those, those artifacts there due to some topology that it was supposed to there, but we didn't have it. Just, you can add it. Sometimes it can be really tricky to add it or just select the cells and then it smooths around. Okay, so, so to end this mesh and to have all this density, look at that, we have it different, different density boxes. Now we go meshing, a boundary layer meshing. Okay, so we have all, all the trips as practices and so on. So I hope also you understand better why you have all those errors in in a snappy and why it's so difficult to do in, in a snappy to get good boundary layers because it is not a proper structure measure where you can have an isotropic refinement okay you, you cannot grow in an anisotropic way you're measuring the volume and in the surface there you have that nasty not nasty it's a good it's nice the the oak tree structure but the oak tree structure doesn't let you to have this and it's a tropic grow. Okay, so you go from something small to something large immediately, and that will give a lot of problems in, in the boundary layer. So now that you have that, you can go and grow your mesh. So in this case, I will stick to to Tetra shell. For instance, you are just only interested in having some surface refinement in, in some of those density that you create. You, you can erase it at this point. Okay, or if you want that, you click, you go, Okay, here you have all your messages and everything. So we have our nice mesh there. I put my cat plane again. So let me move it here. Okay, that region where we have that refinement. So I left the auction or the lattice and there you go. Okay, so you can play with the growth factor, the growth rate. So if you put a smaller value, you will see a smaller tra transition there. Okay, and let me change this one to this. So we put it in the middle, and there you go. All, all your mesh. Okay, so this is how we work in Enova. I hope in this tutorial, now I think we cover everything. Okay, and remember how we work here is from surface to volume. So first you do your surface mesh and it's recommended to use a good topology. Do not use STL files, but nevertheless STL files, uh, Nova can extract all the features, everything can work very well there. Okay, but if you have dirty geometries, the other method is this rim wrap here. Okay, it works in the same way, but this one is fault tolerant. Okay, and then after you have your surface mesh and it's the one the boundary layer, you can grow it here. You can control all the parameters here, okay? And after you have that, you can grow your volume. So first you go grow your Tetra, and if you want to have the poly, you go and enable that. There is the option to have the excess, the tree mesh. Okay, it is experimental. I'm not going to work on that, but you have it there. It works in a similar way, okay? You define your minimum, maximum values, local refinement, so on. But the boundary layer for the moment is not working. Okay, in the in the open release. Okay, so uh, besides that, I think I don't have anything else to add. Just enjoy the tool. Okay, if you have questions, just you can drop me an email or also uh, go in CFD online and 
there, there, there is a forum and post your questions there. So thank you very much for your attention and see you in, in a new series of video. Bye.